Hi! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, and that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a raider. And this is my booktube version of the mid-year freakout tag. Alright, so jumping right in because my parents are on their way to take me out to lunch. Yeah. Number one, best book I've read so far in 2022, and that is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. This was a book that took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting it, and I had heard a lot of good things about it, but then it took me two months to read. It, it was driven by character choices, and sometimes seeing how the consequences of their choices played out was a little painful and it hurt my heart but I really liked it number two best sequel I have read so far in 2022 and for that one I am giving you The Bone Ship's Wake by R.J. Barker this is the third and last in this trilogy and it just shows how Barker had planned this all out from the very beginning and had basically hinted at what the ending would be. It was fantastic. And I love to see Joran's emotional journey through the three books, but especially how it wrapped up and where he went in book three was very, it, it made sense from how he was in book one and book two. So it's nice to see a character not all of a sudden start acting out of character for themselves, but actually to be like, no, this is who I am. And that's why it was an amazing book. And it's one of my favorite of the year still so far. And I read it in January. Number three, a new release that I haven't read yet, but I want to. And there are many of them. I have many books that I want to read, but one that comes to mind is Bluebird by Seal Perlot. I know that this is a space opera. From the few people who I know who have read this, I have heard great things, and I really am interested in reading it. I haven't heard a lot of buzz about it, though. Just, I think, one or two people that have picked it up. So I am very interested in reading it, and I know the library has it because I requested that they get it, and then when I had the opportunity to read it, I didn't. So I still need to go back and do it. So I still need to go back and get it out from the library and actually read it. Maybe might be one of the books that I choose for the new release of Thon in August. Number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year, and that is Station Eternity by Mer Lafferty. This is another story set in space, but think of like Midsummer Murders or Murder She Wrote, Miss Marple all these detectives who just happen to be somewhere and someone dies and they are never the ones that get ex suspected. Well, in this, this main character has been suspected and it's not been fun for her. So she asks to do, take asylum on a alien space station and everything seems good until there's a murder on the space station. None of that is a spoiler because all of that is what the author herself has said in her podcasts. And I'm pretty sure it's part of the synopsis. So that's just the setup for everything that's going on. And I am very excited. It comes out in October. Five. Biggest disappointment. Now I am quite liberal with DNFing a book if I'm not interested. I am a quiet DNFer. I DNF quickly. If it, the first couple chapters I'm sitting on the fence, I go and I read the last, the very end of the book to see if I'm interested in getting to that point. And if I'm not, then I put the book away and I'm done. That usually will happen within a week. I don't typically spread that out. Every once in a while, I will put like something on my currently reading list on Goodreads. And then a couple months later, I'm like, I have no interest in finishing that. And then I remove it. And I typically don't remember what those books are afterwards. That being said, for the things that I've actually finished, my lowest reading 
was a short story called The Girlfriend's Guide to the Gods. I think I got it from a group, somebody had suggested it to me, and it just didn't work for me. The title gave me a promise different from what was delivered. What was delivered was more a series of toxic masculinity over and over and over again. And the title to me implied something a little more lighthearted and like punchy. More like more, not quite to the rom-com territory, but and more in that kind of vein, the, more upbeat. So that would be why it was a disappointment. So the biggest surprise for me was Brimstone by Sherry Priest. This is a historical fantasy. This actually had been on my currently reading list and I picked it up a long time ago, back when I think it was first published, and then had, had left it there. So many years later, it happened to fit a prompt for a readathon I was doing, and I picked it up again, and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed getting the historical pieces of it tied in with the more fantastical elements. And this follows a young woman who is a medium, and she is going to join a community of mediums, and she's having visions of fire and doesn't know why. And this is also a dual perspective. And it was just, it was a lot of fun to even see how you get the relationship between the two characters. And it's not a romance, which I think many times people, this sort of book would have become a romance and it wasn't. And so that was very nice. Seven, favorite new author. It can be a debut author or someone who's new to me. And I'm going to go with the new to me author. And that is Vivian Chen. I read her first book, Death by Dumplings, earlier this year and really enjoyed it. I've read the, the second book now as well. And it's definitely a series where the relationships with the side characters are on a progression. I really enjoyed the mystery in the first book. The second one, I was kind of like, oh, okay. But what I really liked is the relationship she has, especially with other women. You have her best friend, but then you all have her mother and you have her sister and you have other women in her life and they're very rich and you yeah you get a couple of stereotypes um because her mother is asian and she the main character is biracial as is the author but you get more depth even from her relationship with her mother i like that it, it was a lot of fun and i know that i'm going to continue reading this series next question Newest favorite character? Ooh, what character is sitting in my head? For this one, I'm going to go with the little bot. I forget what his number designation is, but he is, he features in the, I don't remember if it's a novella or not novelette, by Suzanne Palmer in The Secret Life of Bots, and then later in Bots of the Lost Ark. This little bot is an old bot that is considered faulty by the ship that it's in, but and the first story is called up because the ship is needing something fixed and all the other bots are doing other things. And so pulls up this bot to go take care of the issue. And then the bot in the process of taking care of the issue gets a bigger sense of what is at stake more globally and just comes up with an idea and gets involved. The, the way the bot interacts, the logic, all of it, I thought was a lot of fun. So number 10, a book that made me cry. This book didn't make me cry, but it definitely made me really ponder life. And that book is How Do You Live by Jin Zaburo Yoshino. And it is about a young man in like middle school, high school age, as he's figuring out his world around him and the world at large. And it's interspersed with journal entries from his uncle because his father has died so his uncle is trying to be a good male role model for him and they talk with one another and share ideas and so this is him kind of going further into the ideas that they have talked about and then in order to then later give him the journal it's really good if you like classic or literary literature i would say go pick this up 11 a book that made you happy 
And for this one, I am going with the Kaiju Preservation Society by John Scalzi. It, the whole thing, it just made me happy. One, I love science fiction and it hit all the right notes for me. And it was just a romp of an adventure. It's not taking itself too seriously, but at the same time has commentary on things that are from the real world. So number 12, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. And I have chosen The Bone Ships by R.J. Barker. This is the first in the trilogy. Since I loved it, I am slowly buying all the books and I just really like this design aspect. It reminds me of old time maps. Even though that this is not how the sea dragons are actually described in the book. I still love it. And book 13, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Need to? Whatever I want. I do have some new releases that I have won in Goodreads giveaways. And one is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I know this came out like back in January, February. I recently got an arc, Eclipse the Moon by Jesse Miak or Mihalik, I don't know how you say that. I still want to read the first one, but then I want to read this. I have an arc called The Notorious Sorcerer. I want to get that read as well. And then just whatever I can. I'm really, really enjoying reading this year. And I'm enjoying be allowing myself to be that mood reader so I don't have like definite things that I absolutely have to read more. I'm in the mood for this. Let's go ahead and read it. So yeah, that has been my mid-year freakout tag. If you do not make videos, I would like to know who your newest favorite character is. And also, what is the best sequel you have read so far in 2022? Thank you and have a great day.